How's it going everyone? My name is Falling Hurts, and today I want to talk about a game that I've been kind of quietly looking out for for quite a while now, and that is Harold Halibut. If you're unfamiliar with this game, I think all you need to do to understand why people are really excited for it is look at the game visually speaking, maybe some of the trailers I'll have playing in the background here, and you'll see that the claymation style is a really strong aspect of the creative vision for this project, which to me is super exciting and something I feel like you don't see very often, if at all. But I really just wanted to take a look at some of the trailers, the store page, and kind of go over everything you need to know about the game before it launches on April 16th, 2024. So okay, you already know when you can play it, now let's figure out how you can play it. So you can play it on PC, of course, the Xbox, and the PlayStation consoles, as well as you can play it day one on Xbox Game Pass, which is super exciting and a nice way to play the game. But anyways, back to the game and what it actually is, if you haven't seen it before for some reason. Harold Halibut is a handmade narrative game about friendship and life on a city-sized spaceship submerged in an alien ocean. You're going to join Harold as he explores a vibrant retro future world in his quest to find the true meaning of home. And that is one of the most interesting aspects of the game from both the demo and the trailers themselves that show a lot more. Harold is very drab in a world that seems very vibrant, or at least it's going to become very vibrant throughout the story. And in that way, I really feel like this game is going to kind of show Harold find his own place in that journey, and I think that's awesome. And those kind of stories are always really cool to me. Now, the game takes place on one of those generational ships, meaning that whenever a ship takes off with a bunch of different families on it, those families never intend to get to the ship's destination. They're meant to have kids or have family trees that eventually end up bearing the fruits of those labors. And it's been 250 years since that ship, Fedora 1, fled an Earth on the verge of Cold War to find a habitable planet to preserve the human race. And as I've already mentioned, the ship is stuck in the ocean of an alien planet, so something's obviously gone wrong, and things haven't quite worked out. You're not going to a paradise. But in this story, you are Harold, a young lab assistant for the ship's lead scientist. And while most of the ship's inhabitants have reconciled themselves to a life lived aboard the sunken ship, that same lead scientist, Jean Moreau, still works tirelessly to find a way to get the ship to leave the planet and find a new, drier home. However, the people of Fedora 1 keep Harold very busy, until one fateful encounter plunges Harold into a world no one could have ever imagined and one that may hold the key to Moreau's relaunch plans. Which obviously, while watching the trailer and everything like that, you're going to realize that this is finding this alien companion. I'm really excited to see just how far they take this fish out of water tale, because I believe that the alien and Harold are going to have this kind of parallel journey that as he allows this outsider to enter their mix, he also will find a way to find home as well. And that's my theory as to what's going on there, but... Let's get down to a little bit more of what I thought was actually super interesting about the game itself. So first off, in the game's features it lists a unique stop motion aesthetic where every element in Harold Halibut is tactile and meticulously handcrafted using traditional sculpting and modeling techniques. So, to be clear, this game is a video game, it's digital. However, when it was created and they 3D scanned everything in, they had to actually physically make these models with clay. And that is why this game has taken upwards of over a decade, over 10 years to make this game. And this is the first game from Slow Bros, a developer of about 12 people by my count at this point, as long as their website is accurate. And honestly, it's really impressive. If I had to compare it to a game more recently that I would say, I would probably have to say Little Nightmares. That kind of weird aesthetic look of some of the enemies in that game kind of almost looks handcrafted in clay in that same way, but not the same animation style for sure. And the camera angles and movement remind me a lot of that as well. Now there is also full voice acting for the game. All of the Fedora's wonderful inhabitants come to life with full English voiceover, elevating the game's narrative to cinematic proportions. So this is huge. I'm really glad that it's not just reading text on the screen. Some games that works, but I feel like a story like this is going to be emotional. I really do believe that at certain times. And with that being said, there is an expansive character ensemble. You're going to meet a variety of unique characters and get to know their personalities, quirks, and stories through meaningful conversations. All of which flow really, really well, and might I say from the voice acting in the demo, this game is on a really strong start personally, so I'm really hoping that the full game can carry that over. And finally, the last thing I really wanted to talk about, of course the game's page talks about how it's a cinematic storyline that blends drama, humor, and suspense. However, what's really got me excited is actually the game's soundtrack. And the reason for that is just 
listening to the trailers or any of the soundtrack throughout the demo, it's clear that there's a unique vibe that is going on here. It channels Star Trek at times. It channels all of these different inspirations that are clear, while also being very much its own thing. And to quote an excerpt from the actual website for the game itself, it involved a huge array of instruments that venture from classical orchestration mixed with analog synthesizers all the way to small wooden robots that sing together. Highlights for sound design included recording retired computer equipment like floppy disk drives and layering weird instruments like metal tubes suspended in water with two van throat singing. Now while that's interesting to me is I have always taken an interest in how sound design in video games is done. It could be as simple as putting things through a filter to make them sound more creepy in horror games, or it could be as interesting as recording things completely underwater, which is something that's not new per se. Frictional Games did this with Soma to make really cool underwater sound effects, and they seem to have done something similar here as well, which is important because a lot of the game is underwater. Now, with that being said, this game has already won a bunch of awards at different festivals and things like that. And whether the category is best trailer or most anticipated game, I can't help but agree. And if you feel the exact same way as me, you can play the game April 16th on Xbox or Xbox Game Pass, PC, or PlayStation. And while the game's file size is going to be absolutely massive, it's important to note that the game has intentionally been optimized to run on the Steam Deck, although it may not be Steam Deck verified. Another thing to note, while the file size is huge, the game's price is not. It's going to be coming in at $34.99 US dollars, and there will be a slight launch discount on every platform except Xbox, where you can play the game on Game Pass. Though, I'm pretty sure with Game Pass you do also get a discount for buying any games that are in the service already, so maybe that negates that anyway. Regardless, look out for more videos like this as well as reviews and retrospectives here on the channel and we'll be doing a lot more as we get later into the year. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Falling Hertz. Consider subscribing. Goodbye.